This will help you. Seven habits for reducing work after clinic. Pay attention to how and why as you start your day. Use pre-visit planning. I know some dogs, they like to look at their uh, pre-chart. Make every second count. So while you're there, if there's their woman, your patient, you can get a couple of calls in, you can do a couple of tasks. Rethink who does what. The doctor shouldn't have to go over everything. You have nurses, you have medical assistants. Certain things need to be tasked appropriately. Document less but better. We don't have to write a full book on each patient. You just have to, you know, document a little bit better. I'm big on this one, touch message once. I don't need to see the same message over and over. Once I've said what needs to be done, that should be it. And then we need to help each other, especially like if we're on vacation, the worst thing to do is come back, you got a task box full of five, 600 messages. That's not cool. And then this is the big one. I think this is my favorite, is mindfulness. How many of you guys uh, meditate? All right, we're gonna need more hands up. Everybody in here needs to get the Peloton app, okay? Yeah, or, or you know what, they have mindfulness now on your Apple Watch, different things. I, I think it's difficult when you're busy to, let, to listen to some other, somebody else talk to you for the five or 10 minutes. I think a lot of drawback that I get, people say it's hard for them to just listen and not do anything. That's how I start my day. Before I do anything, I meditate. So if it's 10 minutes, if it's five minutes, I'm not doing anything else. And what it does, and then if you're spiritual, you're gonna do your daily devotion. And so what it does, it lays down that foundation. So no, no matter what comes your way, you have all this positivity already. We don't wanna start our day fighting with our kid or our husband, right? And so we want more calmness. So that way when you get to work, you're already calm. So if you're all crazed out, you're just like, all right, let's, let's calm it down. And if you need to do another meditation throughout the day, that's, that's awesome too. So a tool, basically mindfulness is a tool to reduce stress and replenish your energy. The practice of watching, observing, reflecting, and listening so that you see the present more clearly and without judgment. And 10 minutes a day with mindful meditation, mindful walking, or focused breathing, and then saying no to others. So those of you who did not raise your hand, I just want to challenge you to just start meditation. I think even the Advocate app has meditation on there. And then of course, our healthy eating, sleep, and exercise. And you can ask this to yourself, uh, do I eat five or more fruits and veggies a day? If not, you can put it in a smoothie, right? Do I limit saturated fats and foods and beverages with added sugar? This is a big one right here. Do I drink alcohol in moderation? Uh, do I get 30 minutes of cardiovascular exercise most days and muscle strengthening at least twice a week? The problem that I have, I'm in a running group, so a lot of them just believe in just running, running, running. I'm more of, you still have to do your strength training. And you definitely need strength training at least twice a week. And do I get the recommended seven or more hours of sleep each night? I know I don't. I'm going to try, but it's something I have to work on. And then for each of you guys, pick one goal you will focus on for the next 30 days to improve your own health. And that's one challenge that after this talk, if you guys, if you don't meditate, try it and you'll see the difference. Wait, I got a question. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so this is what I do. I do mixed fruit. So I do blueberries, strawberries. You know, are you gonna eat broccoli, asparagus? You know, this is just a recommendation. No one really does it all day. It's, yeah. No one does it, but you know they want you to. That that way, if you if you think about it like this, if your nutrition is on point. Your whole attitude is gonna be fine. It's the difference if you eat, like for me, we grew up with Harold's chicken and fries or different things. You're gonna be tired. It's, it's not good for you. If you notice when you eat more fruits and veggies, you have so much energy. Your attitude is even better, right? That's it. Any questions? Thank you. Yeah. 
Okay, the real deal for supplements. I, I do think everyone needs a multivitamin every day, calcium, vitamin D. That's basically it. You know why? Your body is only going to use just a little bit anyway. You, can, you know, I, I have people, they buy like 30, 40 supplements. For what? Your body is only going to absorb just a little bit of it. So you've wasted like $100, $200 a month. But if you're not going to eat right, I would suggest. I mean, I have a teenager. So she's going to eat chicken and fries. I have all the vegetables and fruits. The kid is going to go from chicken and fries. So I have to make her do her vitamins or we got to get smoothies. So... That's important. In your, in your for example, mm -hmm. uh, after 5 p.m., no email. They shut down until the day after. If you check your email while you're on vacation, you actually, the boss will talk to you while you're doing that. Mm -hmm. So in, in France, they're talking about four days, uh, four, four working days. I mean. So they are recognizing this issue. And these are talented people that work for people. So are they doing anything tangible? Are the society doing anything about it? So I can only speak from my experience in my advocate medical group. We work for what they call RVUs. So a lot of doctors are big on RVUs. So they feel that they still need to see 50 or 60 patients. To answer your question, it's more of an individualized issue. For me, I'm a little different. I'm gonna let advocate know what my needs are. So after I've been here for 15 or 16 years, there's no need for me to be here from seven in the morning to five or six every day. We're gonna have to cut some of this down. So it's all about, do I wanna make all this money or do I want my mind still there? So if advocate is not gonna tell you how to make your own money. It's gonna be an individual basis. So you have to be more smart. So you wanna see less patients, you have to learn how to document. The patients are sick enough for you to still make the same amount or even more. So are they helping us? It's more individual. You know, you still have all the patients. For us, I think the issue is our clinic, they get 30 minutes to still show up. So you have all these late patients coming. You're already frustrated. You have this, e, you know, this EMR. It's a lot more headaches. And so basically the tools that I gave you to kind of calm yourself down is going to help. We, we can't control what Advocate or Aurora Health has for us. It's on in each individual. And they'll, they'll tell us we can have our own mental health. They'll give you a number, but we have to really be there for each other. Yes, sir. So with you running around the world and the way that you do, how do you convince your patients and your community to do something similar as opposed to just cheering you on? So I challenge, like I challenge everyone here, I challenge my patients. They don't have to run. Not every, you have someone in a wheelchair, they're not running. But what I challenge them, as they sit in that chair, they can do arm exercises, they can do two, three pound weights. That for me, it's really no excuse. So, you know, I, I tell people, you can move, you can walk, you can lift up, you can do it all. And so I just try to be there to help support them. So not everybody is going to be a runner, but you just give them little tips and say, you know what, you can't do 30 minutes at one time. You may have to break it up, do 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the afternoon, and 10 minutes in the evening. Because 30 minutes for somebody who's never worked out is just too much. And you're going to lose them. Yes? Um, you can answer it. Uh, uh, educate us a little bit specifically, like a, what's better, vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian, keto? Okay, so we get into the different diets. Um, like I said, I've been pescatarian for two years. I feel pretty good. The problem I have with being vegetarian or vegan, you get into a lot of tofu or soy-based foods. And yet, you know, I had one earlier. I had one of those plant-based burgers, but then now you hear their process. You know, with keto, 
I have an issue when people yo-yo their weight. So when you're keto, all no carbs. I'm all about carbs, but you do it in moderation. But you have folks doing keto, they lose all the weight, but then they gain it right back. And then it's high in fat, and so now you have an issue with your cholesterol. And so my thing is, I really don't believe in the word diet too much either, because when you start restricting, it, you know, people are already depressed, especially now, and they'll tell me, Doc, you're a doctor. I can't afford to eat healthy. And so it is very stressful trying to get people to eat healthy when the money isn't there. So I, I just help people choose which um, meal plan they're gonna do. I know pescatarian works better for me.